Hola, uh, welcome to my channel, Clear Vision. My name is Simon, and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. Um, as always, please like and subscribe. Please feel free to leave any comments in the comments section, any feedback or anything you want to know more about, which actually, that's what this video is about. It's in response to some really uh, quite interesting insights um, and questions that were raised um, in a previous video. And so for reference, the previous video was the one that I did on, I'll put the link in the description, but it was the one I did on the evolution of a narcissist. And within some of the comments, people were asking two or three questions, but seemed to be centered around, can a narcissist have both uh, kind of par parenting aspects? So the, ne the full neglect and the over adoration, the um, kind of love bombing from the environment. And the answer to that in short was yes, but I'll get into that a little bit as well. And the other question that came up, which this video is gonna uh, look at more, um, or focus on more so, is do, uh, how, to, um, how to manage and handle um, family members and interactions with uh, a family member who is a narcissist. So, as always when I talk about this subject, one of the main points, and it is really relevant for this video, is not everyone who is a narcissist. This is a term that is thrown around so much. Um, people can have heavy narcissistic traits, or be very strong in their narcissistic traits. Um, we are, or I believe, and there's plenty of research to show that we are living in an era of, which promotes narcissism uh, social media various aspects I'm not going to get into it um, as well as music a lot of music lyrics uh, there's been there was an interesting research I can't remember who did it but there was an interesting research paper on the evolution of uh, music lyrics from like the 50s all the way through to present day and the, the change in language more to the narcissistic side which was really interesting uh, yes it's a term that's thrown around a lot it's a buzzword to actually come across uh, to, to come across a, a full-blown narcissist you know a pure narcissist through and through is actually quite rare um, it's a bit like bumping into a sociopath or a psychopath and it is kind of one of those things yeah when you do you're gonna really really know about it eventually so we need to bear that in mind. People can have very, very strong narcissistic tendencies. And if you if you watch the previous video, I kind of go, uh, and there's another one I'm gonna put up as well with, uh, with regards to relationships and how narcissists interact within relationships and begin to manipulate the other person in the relationship. You will be able to build a picture across these, these three videos really, or those two videos, of whether or not you're dealing with a narcissist or someone with heavy narcissistic traits. And people can also display narcissistic traits given certain situational circumstances or certain things which may have happened to them in their lives. So for instance, we all have a, a, a choice of how we react to the world and some of the situations the world throws at us. And sometimes we're not aware that we have that choice, but sometimes repeated patterns of, I don't know, betrayal and trauma or abuse and stuff can actually twist themselves into and can make people twist themselves into something which could be regarded as a narcissist, but it's more circumstantial than pathological. That's kind of where I'm going with this. And it's like a sliding scale. It's a gradient on, you know, the extreme at one end is the full blown purebred narcissist and at the other end is someone who has no narcissistic tendencies at all. Both are unhealthy. Uh, this person is going to have no self-esteem whatsoever, and, and and yeah, just probably hide in the corner of a room somewhere as an adult. And this person up here is the opposite of that—the complete extreme. So, the world can move us around on that scale. All of us have narcissistic traits and have a a level of narcissism which we want to be a healthy level of narcissism. It's what makes us get out of bed in the morning. It's what makes us push ourselves to get more from whatever it is that we want more from you, you know whether, whether it's a hobby or a career or life it's what makes us proud of ourselves and put ourselves forward and put that step forward and go i can do that i can do this i can help with this that's a healthy level of narcissism 
Right, so moving on from that, let's answer the, uh, the, the main question which, which came up, which was how does one handle a narcissist within the family? Because handling a narcissistic partner is one thing. You're going to eventually move away. You're going to cut them out of your life. You are going to make sure they don't have access to you eventually, hopefully, if you are able to live. And the same with a colleague at work, but the family member one is a really, really interesting dynamic because that's not so easy to get away from, depending on whether it's a parent or a sibling or someone in the, the more extended side of the family. This is not such an easy situation to be able to remove yourself from. Or maybe you have a, a narcissistic child, that would, be, that would be another one. Maybe you have, um, you know, an, your, your older now and you have grown up children and one of them has developed heavy strong narcissistic tendencies or is a full-blown narcissist and perhaps you realize that that's some kind of evolution that you've been involved with or maybe not there's no judgments on this channel only help how does one go about handling a narcissist within the family um, and again it's going to be situational and it's going to be more reliant on what's actually going on so I'm going to give a general overview if this is someone the first thing I'd say the, the most important things I'd say that you need to do are to hold your boundaries to and to hold your boundary you need to know what they are so you need to define for yourself write down on a piece of paper somewhere and then put it away somewhere safe what your actual boundaries are don't just think them in your head actually make them concrete make them real bring them out into the world those are your boundaries in terms of what behavior you will accept what behavior you won't accept what behaviors will make you shut down communications and move away and come back to it later and also how to respond in that because obviously if you just do the silent treatment you too can be accused of stonewalling and not wanting to talk and then you're going to get even more frustrated because somehow the, the, the tables are being flipped onto you so there are ways to deal with this and and they, these are these kind of they're the same boundaries one would use in any kind of relationship when things are becoming overwhelming and to, to, to stop them escalating. So this is right, okay, I don't think it's a good idea to talk about this. At, for the moment, I am feeling X, Y, and Z. So let's have some time out and we'll come back to this topic. Um, I'm hearing what you're saying, but, but I, need to, I need to think, I need a moment to myself. And then you remove yourself from the situation. Laying in any kind of communication problem, laying judgments on someone's behaviors doesn't actually work. It doesn't get anybody anywhere um it's the most natural thing to do hey you know what i don't like what you're doing right now you are being x y and z and the other person is just gonna go la 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 not interested and that's um that's quite a natural response for most people if you notice that you are being gaslit and then the gaslighting changes again i don't want to get into i identifying factors we've already identified you're dealing with someone with uh, heavy narcissistic traits so let's say you're being gaslit you need to move away from that situation and it takes an awful lot of self-control so actually there's a lot of work on the self here where you act with um, you kind of have to think of it as leading by example of what is acceptable to you so there the other person learns the narcissist in question hopefully learns to a point of what works with you and what doesn't work with you. If you begin to react and you react be, uh, in a way because you are pulling your hair out, so you lose your temper, you have an over-exaggerated way of responding, they have the perfect opportunity to flip the tables on you and accuse you of being something. So they'll gaslight, so they'll be like, ah, look at you, you see. So, these are the things where you need to work on yourself and be able to either ignore it um, and maintain your equilibrium or pull yourself away from that situation by kind of calling a timeout. Okay, we need to do this later. Or, a, you know, actually when you address me, can you address me in this way? This I'm going to listen to you that way, but at the moment this is not going to work. And you have to kind of lead that way. 
always remember this is with regards to a family member. I, I think in a in a romantic relationship, you know, I don't know. You'd have to gauge it for yourself, and you really would have to take some. I'd have to know details, but family member relationship you can't move away from so much. Although you can, and there are some circumstances where you should, I don't like the word should, but there are circumstances where it's way, way better for you to actually pull yourself away, move yourself away from perhaps a, 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 an extremely narcissistic person who is not going to respond to anything you are doing. Um, there is that limit to learn as well. You know, when you are absolutely, nothing you are doing is creating any kind of change or meeting on any kind of middle ground with them, then you have to work out what's healthiest for yourself. But if it is a family member, and like I say, you know, there, there, was these com there were these comments, so people are trying to work their way through this. Educating yourself on what's going on for them is another way to, first of all, and uh, this might sound a little bit wishy-washy um, or new agey, but th there is, in having an understanding of where they are coming from, a narcissist. Remember, a narcissist is a highly traumatized person. They're highly hostile and aggressive, but they're highly traumatized. And there's a very, very lost in a child in there. But don't get hung up on that. Don't get hung up on that and try to rescue them or feel sorry for them. But you, it can, having this knowledge creates, helps create empathy and compassion, and also helps you not get so entangled up um, and emotive um, in what it is that they are doing with your interactions with them because what you are what you are looking for is that you are not not knocked off center you don't descend into behaviors that you don't want to you know ways of acting that you don't want to act so you uh, you know for, in real basic terms you don't want their interactions with you to make you angry and make you lose your temper and you go away frustrated and you i don't know you kick the cat you 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 punch the wall you you bang your fist on the table you're doing things that you don't want to do you're shouting out at the sky outside you know chances are you don't want to get to that stage so you have to make this conscious effort not to get to that stage and there is putting the brakes on and go whoop okay, that's, I'm gonna call time out on this situation right now, we'll come back to this, and you leave. No matter what is said, you actually stick to that boundary. Once you've said that there's the time out and you need to take half an hour out, make sure you do it. Don't, you'll get the, because they, chances are they will try to pull you back in, they'll shout something at you, they'll try to trigger you somehow in order to get you to turn around and react. And that reaction is their fuel supply, okay? If we're looking at a narcissist, let's just stick with we're looking at a narcissist or heavy narcissistic traits. So you want to make sure you have enough inner strength to be able to know and stick to your rules. You know, it's the same with when dealing with children, you know, when you say, oh, I'm gonna to count to three. You know, it's that same old thing people say then, you know, stick by what you're saying. If you're going, you're going, you know, make sure you go, don't keep, being pulled back into their game. And that's what we do with children when we try to recreate some kind of equilibrium. And it's the same with narcissists. You know, that's if, 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 you, if you are having to and want to interact with them, because like you said, they're a close member, fam, member of the family, you're gonna have to make sure you don't get pulled into their game all the time. And that takes a lot of work on the self. So you're going to need to do self-care you're going to need to work on yourself. You're probably going to need to get yourself a therapist or certainly a strong friend who can take an objective stance, challenge you and pull you up on a few things and also check in on you and have compassion for you. But like I say, having compassion for the other and understanding the other and having a level of empathy, a healthy level of empathy for the narcissist that you are interacting with is only going to help you and it's only going to be able to separate that this is your stuff and not my stuff, but I'm not gonna get dragged into your stuff. Um, and eventually, narcissists being narcissists and narcissistic traits, one of the narcissistic traits is manipulation. They will work out quite quick that their interactions with you where they're trying to trigger you, trying to gaslight you, aren't working. So actually, you kind of do have the upper hand because if they want your attention, the one thing they the one thing they hate is not having attention. So if they want your attention, they're going to end up playing to your rules, if that makes sense. And I'm not trying to turn you into a narcissist, but 
sometimes we forget just how much of our own power on, within a situation that we actually do have because the other person is very dominant, very narcissistic, highly manipulative, you know, does a whole load of gaslighting, then love bombing, then stonewalling, then da 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 da, you know, you can find out about these things on another video. And before you know it, you're completely lost. So to untangle all of that, you need to set your boundaries. I'm gonna go over it again. You need to set your boundaries. You need to know what they are. You need to be able to call time out. You need to be able to educate yourself, even via like one of my videos or someone else's videos on how that narcissist came to be, okay? Is it developmental, in which case they're a narcissist, or, and it's pathological, is it circumstantial, something that's happened to them has turned them into quite a self-centered, bitter, aggressive person, whatever, you can have, but you're still dealing with narcissistic traits. You can have a healthy level of compassion and empathy, and that understanding of them enables you to distance your own emotional self from the situation. When you call a timeout, when you set a boundary, when you set an interaction kind of ground rule, a framework for it, stick to it. You have to stick to it. This takes a lot of self-work and a lot of effort on your behalf. But if you want to kind of keep that person within the realms of the family, and again, it depends on who the, this person is within the, your circle, um, how much you want them to be there. Don't ever make this mistake of thinking you can change who they are at their core. That's, like I said in a previous video, if they're a pure narcissist, that's virtually impossible. If they have narcissistic traits, it's probably doable, but there's an awful lot of time involved and an awful lot of work. So try to um, gauge the situation. And again, that's this is through educating yourself on this, um, uh, this um, how do I put it? Educate yourself on this development of a, of a person, of a person, you know, how does this narcissist come about? How did they come about? What am I dealing with here? How then, and, and then actually what's their stuff? What's my stuff? And all of this is kind of like normal relationship, interactional know-how anyway, which is then applied to something extreme, like when you're dealing with a narcissist. I think that's about it for the moment on this video with regards to that question. All you can do is hold your own, like I say, hold your own boundary and really, really do stick to it. If you're being stonewalled, let it happen. Don't fight it. If you're being gaslit, walk away from it. Don't get gaslit, you know, and it's, that's easier said than done. But once you learn these patterns, once you educate yourself on this, I don't know what this is. Now, if this is someone you're trying to get away from, you would do the same, you just wouldn't interact. This is someone you have, but if this is someone that you, like like the questions that were posed, someone who has heavy narcissistic traits and is a member of the family and a valued member of the family, but people find them extremely difficult to uh, be around, then these are some techniques you can employ in order to make being around them a little bit easier, but it does take time. If you remember, people take a long time to get to the point at which they're at. There are a lot of things along the way which contribute to developing negative qualities within someone or positive qualities. It all takes time. We are an evolving creature. We, we move from moment to moment. We learn and change from moment to moment, which is one of the philosophical ideas of why there is no such thing as a self, because it's fluid. We're fluid. We're moving all the time. And with that knowledge, knowing that it takes time to develop, it takes time to undo stuff. It's as much as it takes to learn something, if you have to unlearn something, it's the same. So if you have learned a pattern of behavior and an interactive pattern of behavior with said narcissist, you're gonna have to unlearn, and then they're gonna have to unlearn or relearn from what you're doing. So it's like, oh, okay. and it's the same with kind of relay counseling with um, uh, uh, couples. And it's the same thing, it's like one, one person's learning some self-awareness, learning how to communicate effectively, learning how not to allow things to trigger them off and et cetera, et cetera. And the other par partner is standing there going, oh, what's this, this is new. Oh, okay. And then partner A is like, well, they, they're not learning quick enough. But you know, you have to give people time to catch up. You have to give people time to cotton on. And if you're ahead of the game, you have to remember 
you're the one leading the show, so you've got to wait for the narcissist to catch up to your new behavior, if indeed they want to or can do. Um, we never know. I hope that helps on that side of things, and I think I answered it pretty much, but with regards to the other question, which was, uh, can a narcissist develop from uh, opposing opposing messages from the environment so in the development of the narcissist there was one with the with the um, over adoring parent and then there was the complete neglect if you have two messages like that as an individual if you think about it as a child and you can check back through the comments on that video but if you think about it from um, a child's point of view so the developing child the developing narcissist is getting this message of you're amazing, you're so, so amazing, everything you do is wonderful, you're omnipotent, you're the little emperor of the house, oh, I adore you, and then this other message, which is completely the opposite, and the worst one is neglect. Complete, you are not even worth a negative comment. You know, it's that devaluing. Now you imagine a child stuck in between these two gigantic opposing forces, and that child's trying to develop they are going to grow up extremely twisted and warped in their behaviors, unless there is an intervention somewhere along the line, which one would hope that there is, but if there isn't, uh, if there isn't, theoretically, they are going to grow up extremely polarized in their behavior. Chances are they're not going to have any recollection of early childhood. They're not going to have any empathy. They're not going to have any remorse they're not going to be able to understand your position. They are not going to be able to understand much at all. And everything is going to be very either or for them. And you have to remember, and with regards to that, they developed from an extremely, I would like to say rare, but I'm not sure, but an extremely negative environment giving two completely contrasting opposing messages towards the developing self of said child, uh, which can only lead to an extreme fallout later on. And I think the question went on further as to, and then, you know, what's the damage to this, uh, you know, once the child has developed into an adult? Well, the damage is that the child is damaged and is now an adult. And whilst yes, things can be undone, if it took 25 years to get there, it's with something like that, it's going to take another whole lifetime to undo. The brain reaches full maturation at around 24, 25 years old. Um, there's a whole load of neurological studies I could go into, but there's not enough time in this video. And the fallout is everybody they meet will become a potential narcissistic supply, will become a potential kind of victim, if you like, or a potential, but all of you, all of the people in their world will be a potential threat. People that they have to keep at arm's length and either control or manipulate or keep well away. Whether, and that comes from wherever you are trying to, if you are trying to love me, you're a threat. If you are trying to hate me, you're a threat. If you are trying to tell me who I am, you're a threat. Everything in the environment is a threat. Perhaps someone's success might be more than theirs. That's a threat. It's, so you had that, that's what you're dealing with. In that, within that question, the realms of that question with that extreme polarizing development of a narcissist. They've got the worst of both worlds. I hope that helps and was informative. If it was a little bit convoluted, let me know in the comments and I will endeavor to do another video which is a bit more clear. But I think I covered pretty much everything. So until next week, um, take care of yourselves and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and um, I hope you like the video. Adios.